Kokalik Kokalika Sutta Thus have I heard on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling at the Savatthi in Jethas Grove, Anatha Pindika's park. Then the weaker Kokil approached the blessed one, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said, Vante, Sariputta and Mokalana have evil desires. They have come under the control of the evil desires. When this was said, the Blessed One said to the Bhikkhu Kokalika, Do not say so, Kokalika. Do not say so, Kokalika. Be pleased with Sariputta and Moggallana, Kokalika. Sariputta and Moggallana are virtuous. A second time, Bhikkhu Kokalika said to the Blessed One, Bhante, although the Blessed One has my faith and trust, still I say, Sariputta and Moggallana have evil desires. They have come under control of evil desires. And the second time the Blessed One said to the Bhikkhu Kokalika, Do not say so, Kokalika. Do not say so, Kokalika. Sariputta and Moggallana are virtuous. A third time Bhikkhu Kokalika said to the Blessed One, Bhante, although the Blessed One has my faith and trust, still I say, Sariputta and Moggallana have evil desires. They have come under control of evil desires. And the third time, the Blessed One said to the Pikku Kokalika, Do not say so, Kokalika. Do not say so, Kokalika. Sariputta and Moggallana are virtuous. Then the Pikku Kokalika rose from his siege, paid homage to the Blessed One and departed, keeping him on his right. Not long after the Bhikkhu Kokalika left, the entire body became covered with boils and size of mustard seeds. Having been the size of mustard seeds, these then grew to the size of mung beans, and then to the size of chickpeas, then to the size of juju fruits, then to the size of an amelika fruit, then to the size of unripe belua fruits, then to the size of ripe belua fruits. When they had grown to the size of rife beluva fruit, they burst open and oozed pus and blood. Then because of that illness, the Bhikkhu Kokalika died and as a result of harboring animosity towards Sariputta and Moggallana, he was reborn in the Padumahal. Then when the night has advanced, Brahma Sahampati of stunning beauty illuminating the entire Jyotu Grove approached the Blessed One paid homage to him, stood one side and said to him, Bhante Bhikkhu Kokalika has died and as a result of harboring animosity towards Sariputta and Moggallana, he was reborn in the Padumahal. This is what Brahma Sahampati said. Having said this, he paid homage to the Blessed One and, keep, and keeping him on his right, he disappeared right there. Then, when the night has passed, the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus, bhikkhus, last night, when the night had advanced, Brahma Sahamputi approached me and said to me, Bhante, the bhikkhu Kokalika has died, and as a result of harboring animosity towards Sariputta and Moggallana, he was reborn in the Padumahal. Having said this, he paid the homage to me and, keep me on his right, he disappeared right there. When this was said, a certain bhikkhu said to the Blessed One, Bhante, how long is the lifespan in the Padumahal? The lifespan in the Padumahal is long, bhikkhu. It is not easy to count it and say it is so many years, oh so many hundred years, oh so many thousand years, oh so many hundreds of thousands of years. Then is it possible to give us mild Bhante? It is possible, bhikkhu. Suppose there was a coarse cartload of 20 measures of sesame seeds. At the end of every hundred years, a man would remove one from it a single seed. That coarse and cartload of 20 measures of sesame seed might in this way be depleted and exhausted more quickly than a single Abu hell would go by. 20 Abu hells are the equivalent of one near Abu hell. 20 Rebuza Hells are equivalent of 1 Ababa Hell. 20 Ababa Hells are equivalent of 1 Ahaha Hell. 
20 ahaha hills are equivalent of 1 arthur the hill. 20 arthur the hills are equivalent of 1 kumu the hill. 20 kumu the hills are equivalent of 1 soganzika hill. 20 soganzika hills are equivalent of 1 upalaka hill. 20 upalaka hills are equivalent of 1 pundarika hill. The 20 Pundarika hills are equivalent of 1 Azuma hill. Now, as a result of harboring animosity towards Adiputta and Moggallana, the Bhikkhu Kokalika has been reborn in the Pazuma hill. This is what the Blessed One said. Having said this, the fortunate one, the teacher, further said this. When a person has taken birth, an axe is born inside his mouth with which the fool cut himself by uttering wrongful speech. One who praises a person deserving blame or blames a person deserving praise collects bad luck with his mouth by which he finds no happiness. Slight is this bad luck, the loss of one's wealth that dies, the loss of all including oneself. It is much worse bad luck to harbour hate against the Holy Ones. For a hundred thousand Nirabuddhas and thirty-six more and five Abuddhas, the slender of noble one goes to hell, having set evil speech and mind against them. The speaker of slender goes to hell. So to one who having acted, says I didn't do it, having passed away both are the same, men of base actions in the next world. When one defames an innocent man, a pure person without blemish, the evil falls back on the fool himself, like fine dust thrown against the wind. One intent upon the quality of greed reveals others by means of speech, faithless, mean, stingy, miserly, he is intent upon divisive speech. Foul mouth, liar, ignoble one, abortionist, evil one, wrongdoer, base person, unlucky man, low-born, do not speak much here, you who are bound for hell. You scatter dust to your harm. When you, evildoer, maling the good, having done many bad deeds, you will go to the abyss for a long time. For no one's karma is ever lost, since it returns, its owner obtains it. In the other world, the dullard, the evildoer, sees suffering himself. He arrives at the place of impalement, which has iron hooks, sharp blades, and iron stakes. Then there's a food, which is like a bowl of hot iron, is appropriate. When speaking, the wardens of hell don't speak sweetly. They do not hasten, they do not offer shelter. Those hell beings lie on coals spread out. They enter a blazing mass of fire. And capturing them in a net, the other wardens strike them with iron hammers. The hell beings come upon blinding gloom, which is extended like a mist. Then they enter the copper cauldron, which is blazing mass of fire. They are boiled in them for a long time, rising and sinking in the masses of fire. The evil doer is cooked there in a copper mixed with the pus and blood. Whatever region he resort to, he is afflicted on making contact there. That the evil doer is cooked in water that is the abode of worms. There is not even a show to which to go, for the pots and all around are alike. Then they enter the wood of sword leaves, which is so sharp their bodies are cut to pieces. Having grabbed the tongue with a hook, repeatedly slashing it, the warden strike it. Then they approach the impossible way to Rani, with the sharp blades, with the razor blades, the dullards fall into it. Those evildoers who have done evil deeds. While they are weeping there, Brown and spotted dogs devour them. As to flocks of ravens, 
and very greedy jackals, while hawks and crows stab at them. Difficult is the life here, which is the evil to sees. Therefore, in the remainder of one's life here, a person should be dutiful and not be heedless. The wise have counted those loads of sesame seeds, to which the lifespan in the Paduma hill is compared. They come to the five courtes of Nahutas, plus another twelve hundred courtes. As painful as hells are said to be here, for just so long one must dwell there. Therefore, one should always guard speech and mind towards those who are pure, virtuous, full of good qualities.